market and feel bit different, varieties of chili. Some of them are commercial, some of them are wild types. This is my PhD research. Actually, the resistance against Phytophthora capsici, uh -huh. which is a very harmful disease here in New Mexico. Pretty much we do breeding, means uh, uh, we do hybridization and use different techniques in order to develop new varieties of chili. We have all different types of chiles. Some are from very hot regions, others are from very high altitude, and by the eye they look very, very similar, but they can be different. So we're doing a genetic study, like a sequencing the DNA and to see how much different they are. Chile is a very important industry here in New Mexico and around the world. Mm -hmm. Very important for countries like India, China, Korea, uh, Middle East. New Mexico, our program, we have the Guinness record for the hardest chili in the world. The spiciness is measurement with uh, something called Scoville units. The habanero was like 400,000. The jalokia is over the million. Basically, it's the amount of capsaicin. It's, it's, it's a, a big, big one. Uh, oh my God. There's different derivatives. It's like a aromatic ring in here and like six more <laughs> over here. It's the receptors in your tongue, the shape of it, the way the receptors that it connects with and then that gives you the sensation that it's that it's hot. When you get something hot, your endorphins kind of kick in a little bit. So it's somewhat addicting, the spiciness. It's not like you're chasing a dragon. But uh, you do get a tolerance for it. There are different methods for breeding. So you go to the field and you pick the plants that you think that they have some use in the future. This trait has to be expressed every year. Sometimes after okay. you do the hybridization, probably it's a recessive gene or there is some inhibitors or something molecular stuff right there. Mm -hmm. We have to be sure that every time that you sow that seed, that plant is going to express the trait that you want. It's the reason why it takes long time. The minimum cycle, I'll say, ooh, four, seven years, probably. Your research doesn't depend on that, does it? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 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 it's the reason why we try to develop uh, molecular markers. You just have to have some DNA from the plant and test all your plants faster. But a couple of months every time is a couple of years at the end. We just not develop varieties because we like it. We ask first industry, what do you want? How we can help you? We just not, oh, because we want this type of chilies. No, 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 no. <laughs> the resistance, that's very scientific, but also is 100% related with industry because farmers, sometimes they, they lose 100% of the production because of that disease. I like plant breeding because I can be in contact with the traits. Uh, I can select the color, I can try the flavors, and can see how big the fruits are, how many seeds they have. And, and I know the sequence in the DNA, but studying the DNA for me, I cannot feel it. You ask, what I'm going to do after finish my, my PhD, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, my dad said that uh, finally I have to start looking for a job, <laughs> as the normal people do, you know? <laughs> so probably I'll do that.